on air, online, on demand. Watch AFR when you want, where you want with CN8, the Comcast Network. And hello, everyone. I'm Art Fennell. Thanks, as always, for joining us for the report. We begin today with that investigation of two murders. One, the victim was a well-liked police officer. The other, the suspect accused of killing him. 19-year-old Ronnie White was arrested on Friday after he allegedly ran over and killed Police Corporal Richard Finley during a traffic stop. But then, just 48 hours after he was put behind bars, White was found dead in his jail cell. The medical examiner says he was strangled to death. Now, since White was being held alone in that jail cell and the only people who apparently had access to him were authorities, was this a flat-out case of retaliation? Was it an eye for an eye? The way it's going to go at this point is the Maryland State Police will be the lead in the investigation, working in conjunction with the FBI. Uh, my office will be the lead in the prosecution of the case, and we'll work with the... Uh, U.S. Attorney's Office, or it may end up being Maine Justice, the uh, Civil Rights Division. If there are changes that are going to be made down the road, uh, we'll, we'll make those decisions when we get there. And less than two miles from where we stand right now, today, in the Prince George's County Jail, a yet-to-be-identified person or persons took it upon themselves to be both the judge, the jury, and the executioner for Mr. Ronnie White. Something is dreadfully wrong with our system. And joining me now to talk more about this case is criminal defense attorney Michael Cord. Michael, good to see you as always. Thanks for joining me to help sort this out. Uh, Believe me, it's my pleasure. Uh, on the surface from what you've seen and what we've all seen and heard about this case, does this stink? Uh, it stinks and it stinks incredibly. Um, clearly, if a person is accused of a crime, even a horrible crime like the death of a police officer, there are certain rights that kick in. Uh, the police, the correctional officers, the deputy sheriffs, they cannot be the judge, the jury, and the executioner. So clearly this stinks, and I hope law enforcement gets to the bottom of it. Well, they have to play it out, and, and we don't know exactly what happened uh, to Mr. White inside the jail cell, although the medical examiner concludes that he was strangled, that there were crushed bones in his neck and that uh, someone uh, did that to him, and so that makes it a homicide investigation. Um, and, and you've looked into these, uh, these types of cases as a criminal defense attorney. Uh, how would you proceed with this? By, by, where would you start? Uh, excellent question, Art. Uh, first of all, I've been on both sides as a criminal defense attorney representing folks accused of crimes and through a private criminal complaint, I served as a quasi-prosecutor when a white police officer in Philadelphia shot and killed an unarmed team by the name of Don to Dawson. So I've seen it from both sides. The first thing you do is what they used to talk about in Dragnet, just the facts, ma'am. Go out and get the facts. And right now it seems that many facts are without dispute. We have a young man in a cell, allegedly protected by law enforcement, and winds up dead. Those are the facts right there. And another fact, Art, is this. This is not the first time that we have this type of apparent racist brutality in Prince George's County. In the 1960s, a lot of people would be shocked to find out they had what's known as death squads through law enforcement in that county. It didn't stop there. In 1989, a Ghanaian man was killed by the police there. In year 2000, a Howard University student was killed out there. Um, there was a young black man killed in connection with a fire that took place. Uh, dogs have been set on black people. So this case in particular, stinks. Uh, I would certainly begin with the facts first, but I right. got to tell you, the history of that county makes it look very, very bad. Right. And, and when you talk about looking into the facts of the case, uh, I would imagine you, you want to look at, first of all, who had access to that jail cell, who had a key, who had a grudge, who had motive and opportunity. That's some of the basic stuff, right? And, you know, it, it's absolutely right. In fact, when the police begin to investigate a crime, right, the first thing they do is look for means, motive, an opportunity. That's where the investigation begins. Who had the means, who had the motive, who had the opportunity. Now clearly no one could get into that cell unless some type of law enforcement agent allowed him in. In addition, 
only law enforcement would have known that specifically in that area, there's no videotape camera. So clearly there was some involvement. So we're talking about involvement of the deputy sheriffs, involvement of the uh, correctional officers, and potentially even a conspiracy with the police department. Well, and, so and I wanna, that's, that's my next question, and we have to go there, and, and, and we say this with all respect to the men and women who wear the badge and who protect and serve, but there is a long history of police officers who also protect themselves and they go out and take care of business when one of their own uh, has been has been harmed and does that factor into this oh no doubt about it and I'm glad you started off the way you did clearly even for example in Philadelphia 7,000 police officers I'd venture to say that more than 6,000 900 are excellent law enforcement personnel do the right thing all the time but in every group even amongst lawyers you got your bad apples unfortunately though when lawyers who have their bad apples involved lawyers don't carry guns and badges and can do these kind of things so when you got bad apples in the police department whether it's philadelphia and there are a few not many or in prince george's county you got a serious problem and clearly in this situation i talked earlier about means motive and opportunity who would have had the motive to go after this kid? Who would have had the opportunity to go after this kid? Who would have had the means? So clearly, law enforcement, specifically the police, should be looked at. Looked yeah. out as potential suspects or to say, hey, these guys had nothing to do with. But you got to start off looking at everybody as a potential suspect, well, even in connection with a conspiracy. Well, what should have happened with Ronnie White is that he should have been granted due diligence of the law. And in this case, uh, whoever is responsible for this should have also due diligence of, uh, of their right uh, to court. And we will see how that plays out and the facts will, will unfold as they will. Michael Cord, thank you very much. Want to have you on because, as I said, uh, this is right in your wheel well. This is uh, something that you know from both sides. And I appreciate you taking the time on a very busy day to come and uh, talk to me today. Thanks, Michael. Thank you very much, Arden. Keep up the great work. Thank you, sir.